What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Chris Furlong here and we are all about reselling, running, lifestyle and everything in between. And today I want to give you my three top tips for reselling and I'm also going to finish up with a bit of a bonus. So stick around to the end. Let's get into it. So when you jump into reselling, whether you are new at this or you've been doing it for a while, these are my tips and I think they will be of value to anyone starting or wanting to get started, but also it might be something relevant to you to just check yourself if you've been doing this for a long time. Of course, along the way, if you have different opinions, thoughts, comments, let me know below in the comments and I'll be more than happy to have that conversation. All right, so tip number one is start with what you know and build from there. Now, what I mean by this is we all do different things in life, which means we all have an unfair advantage of things that we know better than other people. For instance, you might be really good with lawn mowers, you might be really good with gardening equipment, you might be a Star Wars expert, you might be someone that loves Pokemon, you might be someone that is all about musical instruments, you might be someone that loves art, or you might be someone that's into cameras, you might be into pop culture, you might be into DVDs, you might be into so many different weird and wonderful things, and that is your unfair advantage. So understand what is your bread and butter, understand what can you walk into a shop and know that that's worth something simply because you know what you would pay for it. That's where you start. Start with what you know. When I first started this way back <laughs> when I was a kid before I even got into the full reselling journey, I used to flip Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards and then I moved on to some other different things, some Tarzos, and then as I've progressed and gotten older, you know, I focused on pop culture when I was doing this as a side hobby. Now that I'm doing it more, I guess, almost full time, there's a whole bunch of different things that I range on. DVDs, video games, books, um, toys, all things that are relevant to me as a baseline. And then I start to expand, you know, research and find what else I can bring into the house. But if I was you, I would focus on something that you love, something that you are passionate about, something that you can do less work to be able to get the sale because that is going to be your unfair advantage. Let me know in the comments, what is your niche? Tip number two is make sure you sign up for the Australia My Business post. And you don't have to wait till you're doing quantity for this. Sign up as soon as possible because they do have five different bands. And obviously when you start, you're starting off without a band. So the idea is once you start progressing through that, you can start to save. And I'm going to take you through some of the savings that you can get. And it does add up. Now, at the moment, an average cost of sending something, just a basic uh, parcel or whatever it is, is about $9.15. Now, as soon as you start to get a bit of a throughput of eight plus items within a rolling eight week cycle, that's when you can get onto the band. Now, of course, if you're not signed up, you have to start from scratch when you sign up. So sign up as soon as possible, even if you're getting one item a week, as soon as you tick over that eight items over an eight rolling week, that's when you're gonna start getting the discounts. So to give you some understanding, I've done some averaging and you know the average savings per band. So band one, and I'll put this all up on screen, you can have a look. Uh, so band one, is about 7.5% on average you'll save, which is about 94 cents per item. Band two, we bump up to around on average 13% and you'll be saving about $1.62. Band three, 16.3% with around $2.03 savings. Band four, 19.6% with about $2.44 savings. And band five, 21.6%. Are averaging about $2.69 savings. Now this is all just local, domestic, Australia, not international, but it does also apply for international as well. And I've just taken these numbers from my own experience, so it will be slightly different to everyone depending on what you're selling of course, but when you think about some of those numbers, if you take band 2 or band 3, you know you're sitting around $1.60, $2 per item in potential savings. If you're doing 10 items a week, that's 20 bucks. If you're doing 50 items a week, you're starting to add up big time. If you're doing a hundred items, you get what I'm saying. Even if it's not a week on a monthly basis, it is going to add up. And at the end of the day, you want to be having that better margin, that better bottom line savings amount, because that's going to eat into your profits. So get on that if you're not already on it. Tip number three is packaging hacks. And this is kind of into three sub points. The first one being get your boxes and fillers when you're starting out from local stores, and bins. You can go to Bunnings, you can go to, you know, local shops and say, do they have any, you know, stuff that they're throwing at? You can go to the bins behind these shops and get the boxes. Bunnings, if you're in Australia, would be the first best point of collection for boxes, simply because they have boxes you can walk in, pick and choose what you want. Now, that's not always going to be what you want, 
um, but it is a quick way to be able to do it. Now, as you start to scale, as you start to get a bit more of a throughput, you know, you might want to enable a bit more efficiency into your processes. So my suggestion is start to leverage some of the vanilla boxes. And what I mean by vanilla boxes is off the shelf, basically what Australia Post is selling. Now I use a range of different ones um, and satchels as well. And I'll put these all up on screen as I go through, but I use the small, medium and large boxes. And I also use the small satchels and the medium satchels. Now, the reason why I do this is I can then start to dictate and understand when I'm purchasing something, what it's going to fit in. So put it this way, if I go into a store and it's $3 that I'm paying for something, now I know that's gonna fit into a small box based on the measurements, just from muscle memory. And I know that's going to be roughly, depending on what band you're on, it could be between $7 and $9. So already I know that if I'm giving free postage, we're already looking at, let's just round around to $8. If I've paid $3 for the item, we're sitting at around $11 cost of the item already. So the cost of goods plus the postage. So that's how much expenses are going to be. So then if you're gonna sell it and you're gonna to wanna to get, you know, potentially a better margin, you're gonna be wanting to make sure that you can sell this for $20 plus, because there's still gonna be fees as well. So that just helps me with my you know, firming up if something is even viable to be purchasing. Of course, if you're getting things in bulk, it's a bit different, but that's the way I do that. And then also when it comes to packing and actually getting the job done in terms of getting it ready to send, you can just pick up, quickly put it in. You don't have to worry about measuring. You don't have to worry about doing all that jazz. Now at the same time, some of the additional things that you can add into that for time saving, which is sub point number three is, you know, investing in whether it's a Dymo printer um, and using some of that stuff from home, meaning I can pack and get everything ready at home, five, 10, 15 packages. I can do all the labeling at home, see all the discounts I'm going to get, put the labels on, and then I can just go to the post office and drop it off. It saves me a bit of time. And just from an efficiency standpoint, I don't have to sit there in line, let them measure it up and weigh it all up and all that jazz. So, you know, depending on how many items you're doing, if you were doing, you know, five plus items, you know, you could end up saving 10, 15 minutes every time you go into the post office. So in the longer run, it does save a lot of time. Let me know if you do that and your thoughts on that too. The fourth point, or in this case, the bonus tip I wanted to take you through is know your data. And what I like to talk about is the brilliant basics. This is different for everyone, but if you are starting out or if you have been doing this for a while, the things that I like to track and I think are super important that you understand, especially from a month or week basis is what are your cost of goods? What are your postage costs? What are your fees? What are your profits or your margin? And what is your cycle time? Now, having those six categories is going to help you understand, you know, if you're leaking, you know, potential dollars, if you're selling things, if you're not selling things, um, and cycle times. It helps you just give a bit more of a guesstimate of where you're going to be ending up on a weekly or monthly basis. Now, you can apply some different dimensions to that data, such as you know, categories or where did you source it from or where did you sell it from? Um, you know, was it Facebook or was it eBay or was it Depop? And then you can add in other things such as you know, average sale price, average daily sales or how much profit per day. And you can start to get some running averages, some running totals, and then you can start to, you know, potentially forecast what a week is going to look like or what a month is going to look like based on what you're putting through. And of course, you can then review this data and see what categories are doing better, what categories aren't necessarily you know, selling as quick, which enables you to then decide, is it better for you to be spending your time on different categories rather than some of the items that aren't selling? For instance, for me, my best category at this point in time is books. They seem to sell the quickest with the highest profit. Now, the next would be DVDs, video games, and toys. Whereas some of the other things such as brick brac or you know, homewares and things like that, they don't always sell very quickly for me also because I'm a bit of a noob with those and you know, they're not necessarily a huge item that people are chasing. It is a niche market. Whereas the DVDs, the video games, the books and the toys, a lot broader market and you know, there's a lot more appetite for that. But that's my thoughts. Uh, of course, let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I hope this video has been of a great value to you. Let me know what you thought. If you've got your own tips and tricks, let me know in the comments below. would be more than happy to hear yours or you know, take suggestions or ideas as well. I'm no pro at this, but I have been doing it for a while and I wanted to share some of the things I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and making sure that I do have in place to get me the best result. And I think this could be a key video for those that are starting out. 
Uh, there will be more tips videos like this coming out. If there was something in particular that you would like to see, do let me know, more than happy to share. I've got links down below to some of the different things that I am using if you are keen to use the same stuff that I am. And not just with those mailer boxes or bags, but also some of the post supplies. Now, of course, as I said, if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. I really do appreciate you being here. And make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do the whole shebang, and hustle. Ciao.